we're going to start with the rapid fire round. You can only answer with one word or one sentence to these questions. One word or one sentence? Yeah. All right. Okay. First one is, at what age do you want to retire? 80. How long does it take you to get ready in the mornings? Five minutes. Most embarrassing moment of your life? Uh, uh, I, I, I don't know this one. <laughs> ah, see if you don't want to. <laughs> Favorite color? Color green. What time of day are you most inspired? Night. How many hours of sleep can you survive on? Survive? Mm -hmm. Like the minimum is like four. Fill in the blank. An upcoming technology trend is blank. Upcoming technology trend is based on data governance. The city in which the best kiss of your life happened? Moscow. Pick one, Mark Zuckerberg or Elon Musk? Elon Musk. The biggest mistake of your career? Uh, good question. Um, there were a lot of them. I can't, I can't, I can't choose one. <laughs> How do you relax? Uh, with my wife. How many cups of coffee do you drink per day? Uh, one or two. A habit of yours that you hate? Uh, overworking. The most valuable skill you've learned in life? Stakeholder management. Your favorite Netflix show? Uh, I watch anime. Uh, are you an early riser or a night owl? Night owl. One word description of your leadership style? Energy. Top priority in your daily schedule? Uh, meetings with my team. Memorable career milestone. Moving to Amsterdam. And a recent business innovation that caught your attention. Uh, AI and data quality. That was the end of the rapid fire. Wow. It did really well. Uh, <laughs> and now the long form questions, which you can answer with as much time and ease as you like. Okay. Okay. Sure. So how did you get started in working with data management? Okay, that, that's a good question. So in the early of my career, I, I had a very good chance to work as a BI analyst first, then as a data analyst, then a bit of the data engineering. And everywhere I worked, there was the one problem, no matter what the company size it was, data quality issues. And, and data quality issues is not like a problem in itself. The problem was mostly that there was no one responsible for the data quality. There were no uh, any process around data quality, like who is responsible for this? What is the issue remediation process? And I was very, very upset about this. And then one day I was reading an article with a fancy title, like uh, top data jobs for the future and data governance was uh, one of them. And I was like, whoa, that's really what I want to do. And uh, especially the data quality part of it. <clears throat> and what I did is I found uh, uh, one of the most mature data governance, uh, one of the mature companies that had data governance process in place. And this was like uh, one of the biggest retail companies in uh, Russia, which has more like 22,000 stores. And, and you can imagine like how big this company is, but to, for my luckiness, it was a, like a very fast paced company with a good data driving culture. And I learned that a lot. And this is how I began my data quality and data governance uh, journey. So do you always put data governance first and instinct next. What role do you think instinct has to play in today's society now that data is taking over everything? Uh, so for, for, first of all, I think that data quality is like a part of data governance. So we can't say, we can't make a distinction between data quality and data governance, like a part of it. But then from the other side, I think that uh, data governance is now getting more and more hype, I would say. No more, than, not so much AI, but still, uh, I think it's crucial for, especially for the big companies to have like a management in data. We do people management, we do uh, software management, but a lot of companies now only trying to establish the data management. I think that's like a crucial part because we, every company tries to be a data driven, uh, but a huge part of being a data driven is having a good data management in place. What does data quality mean to you and what are its main goals? Oh, that, that's a very good question, but uh, maybe I can ask, how would you define data quality first? Is that what you meant by a conversational yes. interview? Yes, yes. 
because it's always it's always uh, fun to ask this question because people always uh, say different answers. Well, I would assume data quality is uh, maintaining data that is of value uh -huh. instead of data that is just everywhere. But how do you determine what is of value and what is not unless you have a sufficient amount of everything? So I guess that's what I vaguely think of it. Uh, that, that's, that's a very good answer. It's, it's uh, close to my <laughs> future answer. So the, basically there are two, uh, two answers. One is like official and one is like more personal. So official answer says like data, data is of high quality if it meets the expectations of data consumers, if it's fit for purpose and blah, 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 blah. And this is the official answer. I, I, I like to get this answer. Not, so you can imagine that data quality is like having a treasure map for, uh, yeah, treasure map. Uh, if you have proper directions, if there is no uh, misses in like different like steps, you will get to your treasure as fast as you can. And in our world, the treasure for our uh, companies that we work is always, you know, getting more and more money, more revenue. So if you don't have any issues with, the, your, with your map, with your path to the treasure, then you'll get it faster. That, that's data quality for me, I would say. So could you provide some real examples of what good data quality looks like in practice? Uh, once again, yeah, they, they're, I would say that it's mostly by the use case. So for, uh, because it's based on by the requirements. Uh, we can say that, let, let's, let's give me an example. If we have 5% of duplicates in a table, is it good or not? We don't know because uh, technically, of course, any, any number of duplicates is bad, uh, but that's based on the requirements. If we had, I don't know, like hundreds of billion rows, maybe like two duplicate rows is not a big problem, but if we have 100 rows, two duplicate rows is a big problem. So it's like, it always depends on the requirements, I would say. But uh, the <clears throat> what we can do, what, we, what I can say is mostly that, uh, once again, let, let's go back to our treasure map. Uh, imagine that, uh, we have two treasure maps and your has five steps and specific coordinates and my, mine has seven steps and other coordinates. There is inconsistency between our, ma our maps, but for the same treasure. So that's a good example of the data quality issue. If we compare the same map, we see different steps and we don't know which, which is the right. So speaking of that, when it comes to data quality, where might different people involved in managing data disagree on what it means and how to achieve it? Mm -hmm. uh, based on at least my experience and from what I see uh, in different companies and different talks, uh, the problem, there, there is not really a problem with disagreement on how to manage data quality. There are some and basically that would be the topic for our tomorrow talk, uh, how we as a data governance team managed to introduce a u unique, a unified approach for the data quality across the whole JET. So just to give you a quick spoiler, we, had, we have a lot of engineering teams in JET that do data quality differently. And this lead to a uh, leak of uh, like a comprehensive reporting of, for a single source of truth for data quality. And uh, we as a data governance team, we introduce like a single source of truth, different controls in place, uh, different uh, specifications and process. But let me, let me keep this for a tomorrow talk. But basically the biggest problem that I see uh, within the data quality is finding the responsible, the, the, the person that would be responsible for the data quality. Just uh, one good example. You can ask, I, I, I can imagine that whenever a person you ask, is, if data, is data quality important? Everyone will say yes. Of course, data quality is important. Yes, 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 yes. But then ask the same person, do you want to be responsible for the data quality? Every, most, they will say no. This is the biggest problem, I guess, in terms of, based on my experience, based on what I see in the market, uh, finding the responsible individuals for the data quality, as well as establishing the issue remediation processes. Because it's easy to find that we have duplicates in a table, but how we will resolve this issue? That's the open question. I think this is the, more, the biggest challenge that uh, organizations face when they're trying to manage data quality. So they're both open source and commercial tools for improving data quality. Can you explain the main difference between these two options? Of course. Uh, of course, I can't speak uh, on behalf of all the uh, open source tools and, uh, 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 and uh, paid tools, but um, I'm always trying to be in touch with different vendors to see what they're doing. But basically, I would say that it's more or less the same as we do in like software engineering or in any other, uh, in any other technology areas. When you do open source, 
you're responsible for this. It's uh, like you need to pull the repo and then it's your product. You need to deploy it by your own. You need to monitor it by your own. If you want to have any additional features, you are the one who need to implement this one. And with the paid, uh, with the, like if going with the vendors, everything is already there, which from one side is good, but from the other side, there are risks. Like for example, vendor locked. You may, you may use the tool for many, many years, but then, I don't know, the, the price increases like 10 times, or the tool just goes off the market and then you're stuck with, without the tool. Uh, as well as if you want to do some new features, you may not be, uh, it may not be possible because the tool is, it's not an open source. So having open, both open source and some paid tools is good. It's just a matter of if company can use it because oh, it's uh, one important uh, thing to know is when you use paid tools that are deployed not in your cloud environment, for example, in the data quality, the tool can have access to your data, which can be critical, for example, for the company like Just a Takeaway, which is a public company. We don't really want to sh share data with anyone. There is like privacy with our infosec. So open source is uh, my personal choice. But if, if you can, of course, uh, buying some vendor tooling where everything is already in place for you and you don't need to spend your time setting up these things always also works. And could you give us some examples of some of the open source tools that you'd like to recommend to our audience? Of course. Uh, so in, in terms of data, quality, data validation, I, uh, no matter what company I work for, I always try to bring great expectations. Uh, by personal opinion, one of the best data validation tools. Then, of course, uh, it's important to mention Soda. Soda is like another open source. And bo both Great Expectations and Soda have uh, like uh, uh, managed versions. So you can pay for a managed solution, but you can also do open source. As well, I think it's important to mention, it's not really a data quality, but it's a part of the data governance. A lot of uh, like data observability and data catalog tools, like for example, Data Hub from Accrual Data, uh, for, from LinkedIn, or Open Metadata uh, as well. And there are a lot of tools uh, that I love to use as an open source. So what challenges do engineers and others face when trying to figure out what information is important for finding problems in their work processes? I mean problems in the data. Um, I would say that the biggest problem, when, when we try to establish the data quality process, the biggest problem is to find the data requirements. So imagine you have a, a table with hundreds of columns and billions of rows, uh, and you want to do data quality on, on the table. You, you, you look at the table, but you see numbers, you see like strings, but you don't know if you see some null values, but you don't know, should there be a null value or it shouldn't be? Is there a duplicate or not? Because may, you may not know the primary key, for example, for a table. I think the biggest challenge is understanding these business rules because you can do technical data quality checks easily. Like for example, uh, some, some checks like timeliness to see if the data is updated in the time that it was expected, like duplicates check if you know the primary key, maybe some basic null checks. If you do data profiling and you see that, for example, this column has 100% non-null values, you can do a data quality check on the null value, but finding the business rules, like for example, in, in terms of uh, just a takeaway and like the food delivery company, we can say that if, uh, uh, if this order comes from a specific country, it should have a specific uh, ID with the specific value of a specific column. And these business rules are very, very hard to find. And I guess this is the biggest challenge. And so then how do you recommend overcoming these challenges to improve workflow efficiency? Uh, first of all, data profiling. Data profiling, if possible, if you have billions of rows and hundreds of columns, data profiling may be a bit expensive, but of course you can do like samples of data, profile samples of data. The first step I would say is data profiling. Data profiling will say how many null values you have, what is the distribution and all of this. And then uh, later work closely with the find data owners, which is another very, very big challenge finding data owners. As I mentioned, everyone says data quality is important. Who wants to be responsible? Uh, almost no one. Uh, so finding the data owners, working closely with the business users, with the data consumers, with people who build dashboards on top of the data, with people who, uh, with data engineers, of course, but mostly I would say working closely with data consumers because data consumers are people who on a daily basis c consume this data. They know all the possible issues there. They work with the dashboards. They mostly may be doing some data cleaning by their own and you can find these rules there.
So can you give some examples of adding data quality checks at the beginning of a data workflow uh, to help spot issues? Uh, yeah, of course. So <laughs> there is a lot of them, but the, the, the simplest one and uh, one of the things that is currently on uh, maybe the same hype as the AI in terms of data governance and data contracts. So data contracts and uh, one part of the data contract is um, checking the data types, for example. So let's say we have a, a consumer and producer, uh, so like the source and the target table, and we do a daily ingestion. And, uh, and we can do it like a data validation between the data types. So we always know that if there is a, I don't know, the name field is always a text or a string. It, no, it should not be a integer or a float or any other data type. If this changes, our pipeline will break. So this is like the simple example. But of course, what we can do is like integrity check. For example, in terms of, uh, what, once again, in terms of just a takeaway. Let's say that we can have an order with a CTID 5, but in a CT tables, we don't have CTID 5, which can lead to uh, inconsistent reporting, nulls, joints won't go, and, there's, and we can also prevent this by doing the pre-assertions, like pre-data quality check. As well as, let's say that uh, if, if we pay for the data, yeah, not only for data storage, but also for uh, data, uh, uh, forgot the word, the data, consu no, uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so, um, processing, yeah, oh, so we also pay for data processing. It may be worth checking that if there are data quality issues, we don't want to bring this fewer data to our data marts. We don't want to pay for processing that we will need to reingest again. Maybe it's worth stop the whole pipeline, fix the issue on the source, and then reingest it. That's another use case where you can implement data quality in the beginning of your pipeline rather than post post uh, ingestion or post transformation. Are there any specific instances where early data quality checks led to the discovery of significant data issues that you know of? Oh, there, uh, there is a lot of them. <laughs> and basically, that, that's, that's why we are hired. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, there, there's a lot of them. I, I don't know if I can share like uh, the true like business example, but let's let's say like this that uh, the mo the biggest example is duplicates. Uh, in some of the data marts with orders, uh, we can have because once again, J Just Eat and many other companies are public companies, so we share our KPIs publicly because we trade. Blah, 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 we know like how many orders we have, how many customers we have. This is uh, public numbers. And uh, yeah, having issue with these KPIs can lead to significant challenges for, and for, for the company. Let's pivot a little. So in the world of data problems, what's the equivalent of tracking metrics across different parts of a service? Like we do an application monitoring. Uh, I, I would say so. It, 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 it depends on the on on, uh, on the scope of the data platform. So within data platform, and in order to 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 have a proper data quality process in place, it's it's always based on tooling and the processes. And in order to deploy tooling, you mostly use the same software, the same tools that you use for the software engineering. Like you use Kubernetes, you use Grafana for monitoring, you use Elasticsearch for some. Uh, the data story use databases, but in terms of the metrics, what, what is important, I would say is uh, data lineage. Data lineage is uh, very, very important for the data quality, understanding how, what is the data flow that can help us identifying if there is an issue in the source, what tables would be impacted on our reporting layer, for example. And we can notify all the owners that there is an issue on the source, and therefore all the dashboards in Tableau, for example, may have inaccurate data. So uh, having data lineage is very important, as well as measuring data quality on a, uh, as a continuous processes. So not like we check the duplicates once, there are no duplicates where, okay, this table is of high quality. No, we need to do this daily or weekly, I mean, during every ingestion maybe, or at least on a, on a continuous basis and measure the percentage of rows that haven't met our expectations. So we can always have like a data quality dashboard, understanding what was the quality of the data a week ago, a month ago, do we improve or not? So the last question of you is of a personal kind. It is, if not data, what would you be doing in your life right now? Music. Aha, uh -huh. <laughs> which is also data, I suppose. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 everything is mathematics <laughs> in the in the meantime. But yeah, Perfect. M m music or painting, music of your own. I I I try. I try. I'm, I I I can't, but I, I really try. And, and painting. I also can't paint, but I really love to.